I'm a Jesus follower. You're not serving you, you're serving Christ. I'm not here for anyone's entertainment. Jake from Two and a Half Men means nothing. Put, 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 put God first. I, I, I love God, that's my like, thing. I like love Jesus said, I come to the door and knock. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. Amen. Romans uh, 11, 33 through 34, which is, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? I like that one because we can sometimes uh, get caught up in trying to analyze things and trying to figure stuff out and trying to be like, all right, so God says this and God says that. And so this is how I'm gonna, this is how mm -hmm. I'm gonna make a decision. We're not to live by sight, we're to live by faith. And God is going to do the work no matter what. We're gonna, we're inevitably gonna get in the way. So we got to, you know, just read this, read this, read this, and show people what we're reading. Because that's really what's going to uh, make a difference in people's lives. If I'm doing more harm than good, or if I'm doing any harm, I, I don't, I, I don't want to be here. I don't want to contribute to the enemy's plan. Well, I was always going to Christian school at the same time that I was acting and being, playing different roles. It was one of the things that um, my parents felt was important because uh, I was a normal kid. But there was a process that was started through family, family issues and um, just different set of circumstances in uh, maybe two or three years ago that were kind of causing me to run away from who I had always kind of been like, you know, like I just found myself spending m as much time as I could away from my home. Mm -hmm. uh, things were uneven or uh, unsure in my life. I wasn't, I didn't have like, all right, now I have to make plans for the next five years or the next year, basically. And uh, I was sitting with my friend and I had said, what if, what if the, the way we are living our lives and the plan we have using the way we are living our lives is, is not what's supposed to happen? What if that's not the right choice? And uh, it was that time when I said that to him, I basically had the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that was just like, I felt like I was being hugged inside and out and just <laughs> like, it was, it was the best feeling ever. And, um, and I told him, I was like, well, I feel like I just accepted God. And that was something, you know, kind of weird for me in a sense because I'd always gone to this Christian school and, and you, you know, knew about God, yeah. I knew God in Bible classes and I believe, I believe God, I believe the, the God of the Bible mm -hmm. was the right God. And um, I had another night where another friend, and we were just talking about plans and things in my life and the way my life was going and the way I thought my life was going and the way I figured I was gonna, I was gonna do it. And um, he just, he kept asking me a lot of questions and, and uh, it was a lot more than just a conversation with my friend. It had to have been the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. whatever part of the Godhead it was talking through him. It prompted it, you to really do it, some deep thinking. It was, it, yeah. And you know, the next week I was out there uh, at high school and I was like, Everything, every day was great. It was like, all right, God, what can we do today? How can I, come on. And, and you were filled, you were filled, you were happy. I was filled, I was, it was, it was excellent. But the thing was, is I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily devoting time. I was, I was more or less doing a lot of the same things that I would normally be doing. Um, even if I hadn't been trying to work for God, I was just kind of doing basic similar things. And the next weekend, I was kind of in the same kind of a slump that I was the weekend before. And I was like, God told me, it personally, basically, that uh, that He wanted me to to get it together, and I I've already failed. I've already felt. I you know, it was just one of those things that it really frustrated me, and that was unacceptable for me. I couldn't. Uh, I it was just it was bad news. So I was going through going to a bunch of different churches, and I was I was really enjoying it. I had there was a few churches that I really liked, and. There was some some good messages. All, all the messages, like definitely, were, were helping me. And, and so, I a friend of mine had told me, and this this friend was. Uh, now that I look back, he was always the friend that couldn't go out on Friday nights. And <laughs> and his friend had gone to a church that he said that he really liked. That was uh, 
was uh, kind of down the road from my house. And the first time I went there, I, I went there by myself a whole bunch of times before I started like having the opportunity to bring people because like the first time I went there, I wanted to bring everyone. Um, but I went there and the, the message that the pastor was preaching was like tailor, like it was my message. It was, it Just was, for you. It, was, it was my situation I was in, the answer to the situation I was in. The, it was everything. It was my, it was, uh, he even said at one point, I'm speaking to someone right now. And his name is Brother Nelson? Yeah, okay. Nelson Jones. Angus, I'm not sure, really cares a whole lot about an, being an actor or being well known in that regard. He really considers his relationship with God and what he's putting out into the atmosphere to be a lot more important than his reputation in Hollywood. 100% I've learned more about God and experienced God phenomenally more than I have in my entire life just over the last few months. Now I hear that you're learning to give Bible studies. Yeah, I'm learning how to give Bible studies, I'm learning the door-to-door -door stuff, I'm learning lay evangelism, I'm learning, I'm learning. I can see you as a preacher, <laughs> a powerful preacher for the you know, Lord. Whatever, uh, whatever God God has me do, you know, I'm, I'm there 100%. I don't, I don't know what His plans are and I'm, <laughs> if I always say if I knew what the plans were, I'd probably mess them up. This feeling, this like of uh, warmth, acceptance, love, I, I can't even, it's, it's one of those things that the best way I can describe it is, is being, being hugged by your most favorite person ever, but their, their, their hug, like they're able to hug every single part of your being. We live in such a weird part of this world that we gotta, we gotta do our best to make the rest better. So what's the best thing that Ashton Kutcher has taught you on set? Uh, I don't know, he, he taught me nothing. Ashen question, taught me nothing. You can learn about God. You can learn about God all you want. There's people that study theology all the time. You can learn everything about you can you can figure out the for sure thing, like did this person really exist? How did this happen? If this if the scientists say this, then how could this it you're not you can learn about about it all you want, but this Bible and this God is the truth and you're not going to know for sure until you just throw yourself 100% into it and start experiencing it and applying the truth to your life because Jesus said he is the way the truth and the life and um, you know I can I can testify to the fact that this is the life there's yeah. honestly my life before this was no such there's no life and um, yeah. I'm just uh, I would I say that uh, it's it's the greatest, the greatest feeling ever to not have to worry about a thing, not knowing that you're going to be taken care of, and the things of this world are don't matter whatsoever. So you just gotta be, be in that, be in God, so that He can uh, use you to bring people to Him, because that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. Is making people know God the way you know them, because I know from my personal life, I want everyone everyone to know how awesome he is and how mm -hmm. comforting it is to be uh, be a part of his kingdom work and uh, eventually one day get to see him in person. You cannot be a true God-fearing person and be on a television show like that. Uh, I know I can't. I can, I'm not okay with what I'm learning, what the Bible says, and being on that television show. So, you know, just it's, you go all or nothing. I'm giving my share, my purse, my prize, half going to St. Jude Hospital for Children, other half going to Shriners because I'm a cancer survivor and I, my mother taught me that the blessed of us must try to save the less of us. So I just my way of giving back to the children. I'm, be, so I'm 64 years old, God willing, I'll be 65 May 21st. So and I think about the kids that haven't had an opportunity or a chance to, to really live a productive life. A lot of them go from the hospital back to school, from school, you know, they haven't had a, haven't had time to be a kid, so it's my way of giving back. You wore the gold chains for so many years. Tell us how you're not wearing them now and why. Thank you so much, that was a good question. I stopped wearing the gold last year when Katrina hit. Because I'm a Christian, I felt it would be a sin against God and a sin against heaven for me to continue to wear my gold and to put my flesh my gold into people's faces who don't have nothing. People lost homes, their lives in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. 
So I said, no more will I wear the gold. I will never wear the gold again. We put, sometimes we put too much emphasis on winning, winning, winning. We, you only lose when you give up. You lose when you quit. You lose when you cheat. Or right, say if I don't win the, win the championship, the ball, the little trophy. I still won because of what I represent because I try to live right. I'm not perfect. I try to do right. I try to teach the kids. I'm a product of the welfare system, the ghetto and all that. I was born and raised in the ghetto, Larry, but the ghetto wasn't born and raised in me. So I got a story to tell and I tell them, you lose when you get caught up in the crime and stuff like that. I never lost in my life. I'm a championship wrestler in, in high school in, in the city of Chicago, a couple championship. I went down state. I didn't win the state championship. I took third, but I didn't lose. Who found you? Was it uh, was Steve McQueen, Diana Roy? Who discovered Mr. T? Well, I want to say it's hard because Sly I was Stallone. No, I, I we got to get a get a credit to God. See, I'm blessed by I'm a I'm, I'm a Christian, you know. So God God found me, you know. God arranged things to me. All right, let's go back. All right, my father is a minister. He was a junk man, you know. We was poor. We was poor financially, but we was rich spiritually. If I had to do my life over again, I wouldn't change nothing. Mm. When I wasn't bodyguarding, I used to work at this disco in Chicago called Dean Bats. Yeah, I was sort of a bouncer, people used to say. And then uh, the NBC had this contest called the Toughest Bouncer in America. Humbly, Larry, I won the contest when I say humbly. I won it even though it was called the Toughest Bouncer in America. I did not win that contest, I won it two years in a row. I didn't win that contest because I was the roughest, the toughest, or the baddest. I won that contest again because the cause, C-A-U-S-E, the cause that I represented was far more greater than anybody else's cause. I told my pastor at my church, Cosmopolitan Community Church on the south side of Chicago, I said, Pastor Hardy, they are having a contest and when I win, I'm gonna give you the money so you can buy clothes and food for less fortunate people in the community. So I won two years in a row. I gave a check both times to my to my church. And then they say that Sylvester Stallone was at home at the time watching the program. Then he saw me. I had my earrings and my, uh, my tuxedo, each bouncer have a tuxedo on. Then he saw me, he said, that guy's different and he can talk. Then they called me out. At first they called me in, and they sent me a script. Then that came out to Hollywood audition for the role, had to beat out 1,500 black guys for the part. But I like to think that I got it because I freely gave the money and everything I give, you know, it comes back to me, press down, and shaking then, together and running over. I don't give looking for nothing in return. I'm giving, thanking God for allowing me to be here, thanking God. Because all I want to do, Larry, here's who I am in a nutshell. Sure, I'm tough on all that. I'm tough because I condition my body to be tough, you know. And um, when I was nine years old, I got seven brothers and four sisters. We was on welfare, food stamps. I drew a picture when I I was in school of a house and my mother, and I showed it to my mother, I said, Mama, one of these days, I'm gonna be big and strong. I'm gonna be a football player and a boxer. I'm gonna buy you a beautiful house, Mama, and I'm gonna buy you pretty dresses. My mother was a maid, Larry. My mother used to go in the suburbs and screw up white people's floors. She was not allowed to go in the front door, had to go in the back door. I'm not a racist, I'm telling you what, where I come from. But my mother never taught us hate, Larry. She said, son, you do your best. You work hard. If you want something, work hard, save your money and get it. So I told my mother, I said, do this here. Then I said, mama, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a football player in a box. I'm gonna buy you a beautiful house. And then she hugged me and said, if that's the Lord's willing. It was and is the Lord's will and Larry. You know, like I tell people, crime and drugs was over me, under me, and around me, but crime and drugs was never in me. Why? I wasn't afraid to get a whooping, wasn't afraid to go to jail. I love my mother too much. I don't know what everybody is going through. Everybody come here with different reasons. And my father would always say, it's not how you come to church, it's how you leave. What's your opinion on Mr. Trump and the state of the country? Well, I'm glad you brought it up, Larry. You know, I'm a man of God. I don't get caught up in that. See, God will cover me. I would, because, because I'm a Christian, I've seen politicians come and go. See, like people joke me, they say, who I vote for? I say, I voted for, I voted for Jesus. Because you can't vote him in, can't vote him out. You know, these but people, they're on the they temporary. But I'm saying, I, I'm making it a little, it's a little little sneaky point I'm I making. Get it. You I know? get it, I get it. See, who, who I follow, you know, because... I, I, uh, it's a politics. They're going to say one thing, all of them, black, white, whatever politics. My mother told me, she said, son, where a man stand depends on where he sits. So I've seen politicians come, vote for me, this, and that, I'll do this, that. Everybody's going to promise a good game. But in reality, they don't, you know. So I'm going to stick with God. When, mother, when I was raised, when I was a little kid, mother told me to pray. And I've been praying ever since then. You know, it ain't, it ain't failed me yet. 
I prayed when to get me out the ghetto, prayed to be a good kid, prayed that I don't get involved in crime and all that stuff. You know, I go to the hospital, the mother asked me to pray for their children. They don't ask me because I'm a celebrity. They know because I believe in God, I serve God. It's not a phony act with me. I don't get with God to try to impress somebody or fool somebody like a lot of, a lot of celebrities do. You catch them doing wrong, then they want to get the Bible and all that. I've been with the Bible. I've been taking food down to the homeless. See, I remember when my father baptized me. He baptized me in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he told me I would have trials and tribulations, you know. And I would know, like I said, in order to have a testimony, I got to be tested. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, football players, the football season will start in a couple of weeks. Yep. So the football players had to go to summer camp. Baseball players go to spring training, all that stuff. So I, I call it, I had to go to Holy Ghost training camp. Yeah. What's your secret talent? I don't know if it's a secret, you know, uh, 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 I, uh, I should say preacher. Father, I pray that you separate me from my sin because my sin has separated you from me. So my prayer is, make me better. Make me a better servant. Make me a better Christian. Make me better Lord so that when they see me, let them see you. Make me better Lord so that when they hear me, let them hear you. Make me better Lord so that my message will be the message and not my personality. Make me better Lord so that I may decrease so you may increase. Make me better, Lord, so that when sinners hear you through me, they'll start running and crying out, what must I do to be saved? Make me better, Jesus. Make me better, Jesus. Jesus, make me better. In your holy name I pray, amen. Oh, well, you're a preacher. Yes. Well, I would say you're good at that. Yeah. What's the best piece of advice you ever got? From my mother. She said, do your best and God will do the rest. Person you'd like to have dinner with? Jesus. Who would you trade places with for one day? Mm. Nobody. I actually did not grow up in a Christian home. My mom was a believer. My dad didn't want anything to do with religion. Uh, but I was 12 years old the first time I ever went to church, and that's because my, my parents were having some trouble in their marriage. So a friend had invited them to go to church in hopes that it would help them out. But that was my introduction. I would say that I became a believer. I was saved at 12 years old. I got baptized. I was really excited about my life with Jesus. But at 12 years old, I didn't totally understand what that meant. And so I lived my life. Meanwhile, I'm on a successful television show. Now, I'm just one of those people that I had no desire to go down a dark road. I didn't want to get mixed up in drugs or choose bad friends. I was, I'm like the good kid. But my relationship with Jesus never, it didn't really flourish. I didn't actually have my own relationship with Christ and walk, the, walk that walk and live for him. I didn't find my purpose in him until I was in my early 20s. And I had always thought I was such a good person. I never truly understood why I needed Jesus. Because I made pretty good choices, I could look at other people that were worse than me, making bad decisions. And I never understood that I was a sinner. So when we compare our sin to the standard of the world, we all come up reasonably clean. But when we compare our sin to the snow white righteousness of God's law, we'll see that we are filthy dirty. Yeah. It was then I realized, oh, I do need Jesus because I don't hold up to God's standard. And if God is a holy God and a just judge, I am deserving of hell. And that's, that got me thinking and my eternity. And I thought, well, what am I, what am I left to do? And then I understood the good news, the gospel. Oh, but Jesus, Jesus came, Jesus paid your fine. Jesus took all of your sin, heaped it upon himself. And and was nailed to that cross and willingly died. He took your punishment for you, suffered, and then rose and s three days later and sits at the right hand of God. And I finally got it. 
And then it was out of a gratitude that I thought, oh, my purpose in life is to glorify God. I'm gonna break it down. It's the simplest thing. My purpose in life is to glorify God. My secondary priorities are the ways in which I get to glorify God. So my second priorities are my work as an actor, being a mom, being a wife. All of these things allow me to, to get to my life's purpose. So having some of those thoughts uh, in mind, I, I talk about our, this outrage culture that we live in. Could we switch it to a kindness culture? Could we all work on that? Could we think about, instead of thinking to ourselves, especially as women, instead of being empowered women that thinks the world owes us something, that we become in Empowered women, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and treat everyone with respect. My work choices have been very intentional. My whole life, I have chosen to do family programming, and I do that. So sometimes, you know, people, people love the Hallmark Channel. People love Fuller House and Fuller House, but sometimes it's just like, ah, oh, maybe you're not good enough, and, and so you do Hallmark movies. Oh, no, no. I choose to do Hallmark movies. I choose to do Hallmark movies. So there's a big difference in that. I've said so many more no's in my career than yeses. I've said a lot of no's that could have probably propelled me to a bigger platform, but they did not line up with my values and beliefs. And I feel like if, if we, if you are not in every type of business out in the world, then who, 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 who's gonna be doing it? All the non-believers. We have to be in spaces that are not only in a Christian bubble. We have to get out there so that we can be an influence to other people. So, for, for instance, you know, on Fuller House, I do get a little heat on Fuller House because people say, oh, this isn't the same kind of content. This isn't as family friendly as the original. And while that may be true, although if you go back and watch some old Full House episodes, you just didn't realize those jokes went right over your head as a kid. So it's doing the same thing in Fuller House. But I, under, I understand the, the, the point um, when people might see a show and say, I'm really disappointed that uh, you, you would do that on your show or some of the storylines are, are this. But what people don't realize is the influence behind the scenes. While you might see something that you're irked about on the show and thought, oh, that's so disappointing. You're not the Christian that I thought you were if you allowed that on your show. I want to let you know that there's so much going on behind the scenes that maybe there was one joke that went too far, in my opinion, but there were 10 of them within the week before. And as we rehearse, I'm constantly talking, saying, let's rein this back in, let's pull this in, or can we go in this direction? So I don't win every battle, but I'm fighting for it. And I know that is honoring to God. Even if it's not perfect, even though it's not the way I would hoped it would be in the biggest sense of it, but every little difference, every little fight makes a difference for God. That is honoring and pleasing to God.